Hi, I'm David Samples with ICF Walls of the Ozarks around Springfield, Missouri. Um, I want to talk to you today about our trusses. When I started building ICF about 10 years ago, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. I'd never seen such a thing to be able to build a wall that will withstand a 250 mile an hour wind and has all the energy efficiency and the quietness and all the things that go along with it. And I get to the top and I'm, I'm thinking about what needs to be done next and hiring my people to come set trusses and all that kind of thing. And I get all of the instructions out for my very first ICF house. And I think, really? They want me to take a two by six and embed it down in the concrete and put a couple of anchor bolts every four feet or whatever it is. And then I'm just gonna lay the trusses or the roof rafters or the whatever's on top of that and attach it with a hurricane clip. I thought, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my life. I've got these great walls that are so strong and I've got a roof that's gonna get blown off by a straight wind. In Southwest Missouri, we've got straight winds of 100 miles an hour. I mean, on a regular basis. So you can imagine what the risk is um, if, the, if it's just gonna be sitting on top of this top plate. I actually have uh, reports in my office that show a house that was built that way and that's the way everybody wants to do it. You embed this green plate in, down in there and put the anchor bolts in. An EF5 tornado came along and literally ripped the green plate off and the roof and everything else. Anchor bolts were left in the concrete. Woo, -hoo! you know, strong anchor bolts. I didn't think that was good enough. It just didn't make sense to me. And so I started calling um, trust companies, engineers that would work together with me to build a better mousetrap, do something that was going to be strong enough for the roof to be complementary to my walls. And so we found a trust company on the west side of Springfield and uh, sat down with them and we have designed a roof system that's engineered for every individual house. So it'll look just like your plans, um, but it is engineered. They give me a layout, and, and uh, we'll put a better sheet of this so you can see it, but they give me a layout, looks like a blueprint, of where every single truss is going to sit on top of my walls. When the guys have finished stacking the walls and it's ready to put the concrete in, they will go by and they'll mark, according to this plan, they'll mark on the wall exactly where every truss is going to sit, and then they'll put an X beside that line so that they'll know which side of the line the truss is going to sit on. When they get finished and we actually are setting the trusses, this is what it looks like. There's the, there's the line, there's the X, and the truss is gonna sit on it. So after they have put the concrete in the walls, they screech off the top, get it all smooth, and then wherever that line is, they will embed these tie-down strips into the concrete. And the tie-down strips, if you'd look at them, there's, there's actually what's called an embedment line here, so it shows exactly how deep it has to go in. And then what's going to happen is, the truss is gonna come along and get set down beside it. There's a vapor barrier that goes down so that you have a vapor barrier between the truss and the concrete, but there's a, the truss gets sit, sat down beside it, and then it gets nailed in on one side, it gets bent over on the top and nailed in, and bent over on the other side, nailed in on that side. And this is what it actually comes out looking like when we get finished. Now this is a mock-up, so it's got some extra support in it so that it won't fall over uh, because it doesn't have a roof on it. But you can see my ICF wall, you can see my mark and the X where the truss is going to set. The concrete's been screeded off and it's nice and smooth. The tie-down was put in in exactly the line with that line there. This is the part that's not on an actual truss. This is just there for the support of the truss. We use screws for our mock-up instead of uh, like it would be done in the field, but we actually would nail this. This truss tie on a, on a real truss uh, would actually come up over the top, back down on the other side whenever it's finished and the nails are filled in. We fill in all the holes uh, with nails. When we do this, my trusses are better quality trusses than something that you would just go down and buy. Uh, they use a better top cord material. They use a better bottom cord material. If the, if the typical truss was going to be a two by 12 on the, I mean a two by six on, on the bottom cord, we would use a two by eight probably, or a two by, if it called for a two by four, they would use a two by six. What I'm going for is a wind rating that is more commensurate with the strength of my walls. Again, I've got straight winds in Southwest Missouri that are gonna be 100 miles an hour, so I need something that's really, really strong, even for day-to-day -day winds. 
My trusses are engineered to withstand 200 mile an hour winds. When installed properly with the tie downs that are better in the concrete, the top cords and the bottom cords and all the diagonals and the verticals with better quality wood, each truss will actually, and we'll put this on here too, each truss will be rated for a 200 mile an hour wind resistance. There's uh, all of the inspectors. If you have inspectors in your area, the inspectors will get this sheet that shows exactly where it's supposed to be installed. They'll get a copy of the layout that shows exactly where it's supposed to be installed with all the different designs and the names of each truss. So what we've tried to do is build a system where the walls are gonna withstand the tornadoes or the hurricanes or whatever the natural disaster is in your area. The roof is also going to be able to, to withstand whatever the natural disaster is in your area. For us, it is a 200 mile an hour wind. The worst winds that we've ever had were the Joplin tornado about 12 years ago. Uh, that tornado's winds approached 200 miles an hour. So I wanted to be able to build a house that would withstand at least the worst we've ever had. And that's what we feel like we've done. We have a wall uh, system that will stand 250 mile an hour winds, the roof system engineered and stamped, verified to withstand a 200 mile an hour wind. So again, what we've tried to do is put together something that is better, that's safer, that's more energy efficient, something that's going to protect your family. Because we believe that your ICF house should work as hard as you do.